Hello everybody, uh, my name is Etem, this is Fable The Lost Chapters 100% as previously mentioned. Um, I guess to quickly, very quickly run over the criteria for 100%, so it's all quests, so all 54 of them, all silver key chests, all legendary weapons, maxing out our stats, uh, what else is there that I'm forgetting, uh, all trophies and probably something else. But yeah, let's just get straight into it and hope that the game loads correctly, let's just here and if I skip this cutscene all right so time will start in three two one and go thank you thank you <laughs> so yeah first thing you'll notice is that I'm rolling everywhere rather than running and that's just because rolling is faster than running um, as we level up our speed stat and such um, it will be even faster and co we can combine it with other movement techniques so first thing we're going to do is deck this bully in the face. So basically, as the starting tutorial thing is that we need to get a present for our sister and we need three gold pieces and we can either do good or evil deeds, sort of the premise of the game. Um, so we did a good deed by beating up that bully and we got a teddy bear and we can return it to the rightful owner right here. So that's another good deed. And then we're going to commit one evil deed which will alert the guards and we are going to talk to... Our father to get the second gold piece. Then head over here and speak to this person who is committing some adultery. And we're going to accept his bribe to keep silent, which we shall do dutifully. And now we've done that, we are going to alert the guards. And in doing so, they'll sort of try and chase us and scold us for uh, doing something wrong. Um, there's two guards here. As long as I avoid them both, we'll be fine. If I, they do catch me, I'll lose a couple seconds. But um, it seems like they're playing nice. So yeah, now they're chasing after me, but we're a speedy sonic demon thing, so uh, we run much faster. So here's our sister. Yeah, hand out the chocolates. And then as part of the story, our village gets raided by bandits, aka a freak candle accident. Um, we're going to head up here and we're going to see our father who... So basically, story-wise, we believe our whole family is dead. Um, our sister and mother are captured, more on those later. But we'll get rescued by um, Maze, who is a traitor. We'll we'll see him later on in the game. But anyway, um, very sad story stuff. And we're gonna go to the guild and just be shown like the ways of being a hero, story wise and gameplay wise. It's basically just teaching you how to fight and hit things. So here's our uh, sort of rival whisper, and the first thing we're gonna do is deck her in the face twice. Um, this actually has a speed purpose in that it's set up for a trick later. Um, but here is our first deviation from the regular any percent route in that we are in the guild library as you can learn a lot from the books here. as whisper kindly interrupts me with um, so I'm going to grab all of these books um, because there is a side quest later called book collection where we have to hand in all the books to um, a school to basically replenish their library um, and luckily half of them are all in there so we'll we'll get to that as and when, but um, for now we're just being shown basic melee training with the guildmaster. Um, so we just taught how to punch this dummy. Not and then we'll get a that. stick. Cool, and then the guildmaster is going to give us our sort of first quest, which is to hunt some beetles in the guild woods. Um, they all take one hit to die, but unfortunately... The way the targeting works um, makes it a little bit finicky because um, they like to sort of fly around and mess up the way you swing your uh, stick. So we'll see how we go. If um, if I whiff some hits, it's definitely the game and not me. Hopefully we'll get a few double hits, but we'll see. One, two, and as we kill one, a uh, one will spawn on the other side. So. Oh. I'll take that. I didn't even see that tenth well one. Done, lad. The beetles are all dead. You can come out of the woods now. So the guildmaster says that the beetles are all dead, but last I checked, unless there is um, some breaking news in the last ten minutes, Paul and Ringo are still alive. So getting some false information there. Get out of bed, lazy bones. Cool. So we're going to take a very short detour up here to grab a book. It's pretty out the way for like any other instance, but luckily here. Taking this route only uh, loses about five seconds, so it's definitely worth it. 
Um, outside of that, there's not really any ideal place to get a book. Um, yeah, um, I guess we're going to be doing the um, the sort of more advanced melee train where we just shown how to like swing our sword and block and stuff. So, Mitako, if you have anything you want to read, go for it. Absolutely. We have got a $25 donation from Sarah Venza. who says, greetings from the ESA audience. Long time viewer, first time attendee here. I wanted to give a shout out on behalf of the Fable speedrunning community back home and wish you the best of luck on your run today. Let's see if we can't make Whisper repent for all the runs she's killed in the past. <laughs> so yeah, there is so a... That is going to... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's going to the, the bed war for, uh, for the fate of Whisper so we can either... Uh, save or kill whisper and and with that uh we've got a difference of gosh it's about it's about 150 bucks for it is so we've got 145 to kill whisper and we've got 285 to spare whisper um so it, that's if you have very strong feelings about about the character and the run you can definitely get some donations in to influence that i'm not saying anything my uh my opinion means nothing here but um by all means go for it so anyway us punching whisper earlier um, is set up for a trick here. So as part of the archery training, he says, I'll see how many targets you can hit in a minute, which is obviously slow. But if we attack a friendly NPC four times, um, he'll scold us, and then that will mean we can skip that. Um, the good thing is that demon doors also count as friendly NPCs, so I can just do this instead. Oh, I also need to lightning. That'd be a good idea. And then he does the same thing here, which skips the magic training, which... Um, which is useful. So instead of hitting continue here, we're going to hit play um, because I think Whisper wants us to hunt beetles in the guild woods. But what we're actually going to do is, um, well, there's actually going to be bandits there, so we're going to kill those. There's just three bandits, and we have to use our archery. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, we'll get some decapitations in a video game, of course. Um, so as long as I charge up my bow enough. One. He also gained hair as I uh, beheaded him there. Not sure how that works. Oh. Got the dodges. Oh. We did it. So she says we did it, but literally she just sat there and did nothing. Um, the only thing she does do there is that if she, um, if your health reaches zero, she'll heal you, but like you have to almost be trying to have your health reach zero. Like you have to stand there for a good two, three minutes doing nothing. Yeah, intercept the guildmaster here. Before you graduate. And we're gonna head up for the final part of guild training. So um we're gonna fight Maze and be taught like we he's basically gonna do a final test which is just like oh hit him with your sword seven times, use your bow seven times, use your magic seven times, so we'll see how that goes. His teleport spots are random-ish, so um, pretty ideal spot. And then after that, we'll be finished with the guild training, and we'll get our first upgrade, which is Assassin Rush, which is just going to sort of zoom us forward, and we'll actually be doing a glitch. Um, but we'll get there when we get there. That's enough. So yeah, we're going to head over and the first glitch of the game we're going to do is something called Hotshot Glitch, which is um, a bug with the XP menus where when you are in an XP menu and you can buy an upgrade, it gives you an option to undo it. But if we hit undo and then try and buy it at the same time, we have the opportunity to buy it twice or like double buy it. So to do that, we're going to use that to get an upgrade we can't actually afford. So if I hover here... And first try, nice and easy. Thank you, thank you. Definitely didn't practice that. Um, gonna take Wasp Menace, and that's an Assassin Rush. You'll be seeing that a lot throughout the run. It does have a short cooldown, so we're gonna sort of use that in tandem with rolling. So we're already gonna be much, much faster than running, and it zooms us much further than it would normally because we leveled it up to level two instead of level one. And then we're also going to be able to do uh, some pretty recent tech, which is, it doesn't actually have a name, but I call it target cycling, which is that if you press and hold the target button, um, you can actually cycle through targets. Um, we can just do that sort of like swing our camera and kill all the wasps there. What? 
The thing I neglected to mention before is that most bosses in this game have something called like health thresholds, which is that after a certain amount of damage, they actually can't um, be hit anymore or take any more damage. Because um, usually like they do an animation or do a cutscene or something like that. So that's why I had to stop um, when the Wasp Queen spawned more wasps. It was just because she would have been invulnerable so I could have been there till Christmas and nothing would have happened. So we're going to head over to the first town of the game, which is Bowstone. And we're going to have a pretty big deviation from the regular any percent route. So you may already be familiar with this, but um, I guess I'll go over the, how the game's economy works, or more specifically how it doesn't. Um, so when you buy items from a trader, he, um, it's stock based. So it's like the more the trader has, the cheaper he'll charge. And the less the trader has, the more he'll pay for it. Um, so what we can do is abuse that by buying an item in bulk. The trader will then have none of the item, then we can sell it back in bulk. And because he doesn't have any of the item, he'll pay a lot for it. So we're going to use that to get some free money. So we'll go over here. We're at 570 gold. We're going to sell our potions and res pile. Go buy apple pie and grain sack. Fishing rod and spade. Then we're going to sell back the grain sack and apple pie. And we're already at 3k gold. We're going to pick up some amnesty. And we're going to do that one last time. Cool. So we're now at 4.6k gold, and we're immediately going to break this barrel to get a moonfish, and this one here to get a golden carrot, and those are time-changing items, so when you eat them, it will change either to day or night, depending on which one you ate. Um, the only downside is that if it's already that thing, uh, it won't do anything, but it's going to be pretty vital for um, management. Where is the guard? Oh, he's stuck here. We're going to pay the fine. And then we're going to do a trick that's called Etem Mode. For clarity, I did not name it. I'm not that self-absorbed. Um, so I'm going to use this trophy minigame. I'm going to pause buffer into the loading zone. And then I'm going to head up here. So this guard here um, blocks us from entering Bowstone North. But the cutscene that starts it, the bit that sends us down is actually just a radius around him. So I'm going to push him out the way. And then I'm going to cancel it with a fart. That was the game, not me. Um... We're going to head back in, and now because he's pushed out the way, we can just sort of take a little trip up to Bowstone North, which is uh, your, is no, or normally only accessible before or after the arena. Um, we get an opportunity to get quite a few good things, and we'll do our last buy and sell glitch here as well. So first things first, we're going to head in here and grab a book. You are on quest business. Hopefully she didn't notice that. Didn't. Masters of Stealth. So we're going to do the same thing here, but to a more extreme degree with the buying and selling. So we're going to buy all the perfume. We're going to sell them. Rinse and repeat. So we're now at 18k gold from 4k. We're going to then buy all the diamonds. Then sell them back 50k. You can see how quickly this is ballooning. And we're going to go up to 150k and get some... Um, Get some pieces, so we're gonna get a hero doll, we're gonna get some books, potion, red meat, and one last time. And we're also gonna pick up a perfume for later. Cool, 148k gold should be fine. So I'm gonna pick up weapons that are basically gonna take us through to the end of the game. So we have the Solus Greatsword, which is basically barn on the most powerful weapon in the game. The Master Longbow, which is like the second most powerful bow in the game. And we're going to use those to great advantage. But for now, we can't actually equip the um, Solus Greatsword because it's too heavy. So we're going to sleep here. And we're going to do some fishing. Oh, operates. Thank you. So we need to fish up a 30 gram fish as part of the fishing competition. And the way fishing works is essentially like a really evil version of red light, green light. So we'll see how this goes. I'll try and play it safe. Puffy. I really hope it's 30 grams because otherwise I'd just feel insulted. Cool. 
Cool. That better be 30 grams or there'll be serious trouble. Cool, okay. The 96 grams, that's more than perfect. So we're going to head up here and grab uh, Age of the Will Potion. And what that's going to do is that when we drink it, it will uh, give us a 1,000 uh, will XP times by our combat multiplier, which is basically like a combo meter. So we'll use that when our combo meter is high and then we get even more XP. Um, but heading up here, we are going to do one of the scariest parts of the game, which is the pub games. And the first one is card pair, so we need to match up all the card pairs in a certain amount of time. Unfortunately, my memory is terrible, so we'll see how this goes. Um, but if I'm muttering card numbers to myself, pay it no mind. So 10 and 3, 8 and king, 9 and king. It was here. No. Ah, you know, I'll just try again. How much will you wager? Cool. So five and nine. Jack and five. Two and Jack. Ace three. Four and nine. Oh, beer would be nice. Oh. Ah, I'm joking. <laughs> ah, I missed it by a second. All right, let's give it one more go. It's all right. We're not under any time constraints. It's not. A, it's not a speed run or anything. I choked it at the end there. So three and king, six and six, ten and queen. That one. Yep. Let's go for the last one. So four and three, nine. A drink for me, please. Cool. That's that done, and then we get a hero doll. And then this uh, this kid asks us if we have any hero dolls. So that's something we're going to hand in right at the very end of the game, um, as part of the doll collection, where we have to do all the pub games. But for now, we're going to talk to this lady who I presume is a fairy based on what she says here. Oh, woe is me. Anyways, um, we're going to free up a hot bar slot and we're going to get an Ages of Might potion. Then we're going to do the Fist Fighters, which is like the first of the, um, I guess it's like the punching club sort of thing. So um, there's a few mechanics to it, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, if there's anything that um, you want to read, Mataco, go for it, because um, I'm just going to be fighting people. Yeah, sure can. We've got $5 from the Fable Historian. He says, Poggers, it's Fable. What a good game. Good luck on the stream. Thank and you. we've got $20 from Avethis, who says, doing my duty as a Fable speedrunner by bidding on Kill Whisper. Uh -huh. now, you said you didn't have an opinion on this earlier. It's, it's, I mean, what is there? Is there a general consensus in the community as to what to do with Whisper? Uh, so we don't like Whisper, and we would love to kill her. But it's slower to kill her, uh, so so it's sort of a uh, a moral dilemma, as it were. The uh, the, the difference right. between speed and uh, speed and satisfaction, but yeah. Well, currently we're at what 165 for kill and 305 for spare, so I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see how things play out. Yep. So we have, um, we're just basically fighting these guys. Um, there's a few rules like you're not allowed to be out the ring for too long and um, the amount of hits it takes is damage based. So right now we're pretty weak so it takes a lot of hits. Um, all you need to do is just fight these guys while these guys cheer along. Go, Way. Sounds like London on a Saturday night. But anyways, um, that's all done. And we're going to head down here and speak to this guy. He's going to give us a quest called Beardy Baldy. We're not actually going to do it at the moment. We're going to sort of do it an hour from now. We're just sort of... The the route is sort of a little bit all over the place at the moment, but it's all set up for later. I think most of the goal is to um, do a lot of things early, and then that means that the late game is faster. So we've got Protect Orchard Farm here, and we took the quest and boast, which takes us right outside. Gonna head up here. Hey. 
Maybe a silver key. I kind of neglected to mention what the silver keys do. So they're used for opening um, silver key chests. Um, they're not used up when you use them, so we're just going to grab them as we go along. Um, we also got a quest to find four blue mushrooms. This lady has one, and she wants us to make her laugh. Fortunately, I'm really bad at making women laugh, so... Blue mushroom obtained. Anyways, um... We're gonna head into Greatwood Entrance here, and this is one of the first maps where uh, using Assassin Rush isn't actually faster because we have wasps, and wasps are like one of the fastest enemies in the game. And due to the way that targeting works, if we try and rush while we're targeting one, it's just gonna end up rushing us backwards. So case in point, oh no, actually that was a good example. Uh, so if we rush here. And if we was to try rushing backwards, it actually works. It's just just showing me up at the moment. I mean, it's fast, but it's also showing me up. It would have rushed me backwards towards one of the enemies. You just have to take my word for it. Cool. As that goes along, we're just going to do the fishing competition, which um, right now the um, fishing competition leader, I guess, is... Um, is trapped in his hut because there's a wasp infestation. We're just going to deal with that very quickly, and then he'll uh, we'll fish up a golden fish to prove our prowess, and then he'll revive the fishing competition, which we have already got a uh, heavy enough fish for. Looking fine. Cool. So we're just going to fish up a golden fish. Luckily, this one is much easier than the last one, so we'll hopefully not be here till Christmas. Um, so we'll just do that. Um, but if there is anything you wanted to read, Mataka, now is a perfect time. We have got $20 from KJ Freshly 206 He says, have a great run, Etem, and be sure to get your finger out. Much love. <laughs> Thank have, you, KJ. There, are there more skips with your name on them? Um, I can't remember now. You're putting me on the spot. I don't think there is, but um, but yeah, KJ is an OG runner. Um, quite a few of us are OG runners, sort of going back to sort of 2015, 2016. Um, we have a combined about 30 years of Fable running under our belt. But yeah, no, um, it's nice to, nice to hear from you. Hope you're well. Come back. Cool, so we have the Rod of Champions now, which um, also makes fishing easier. And we also got a snazzy fishman hat, which uh, should, we make, should we put on? We're getting some nods from behind. We'll put it on for the kids. But yeah, no, to uh, clarify, I didn't actually name the Etymode skip. It was that I found it and then someone else named it on my behalf. So make of that what you will. So we have the hat on now. So we look extra snazzy. That's fishing competition complete. So we're going to head over to Orchard Farm and do um, the Orchard Farm quest. We're just going to make our way there. <coughs> Excuse me. We go head over here, grab this silver key. So we're now at five, which is fortunate because right here is a silver key chest, which requires five silver keys. Wouldn't you know? It's almost like I rooted this at some point. So grab this and elixir of life. Um, you may also see that I'm freeing up slots on my hotbar at the bottom, and that's just because if I've not picked up an item before. It will actually fill up that hotbar slot, so I'm sort of doing that to minimize the amount of time I'm in the menus. So, for instance, I use the ages of, uh, also I use the Wheelmaster's elixir there to increase my mana pool, and it also meant that um, it freed up a hotbar slot for the elixir of life, which permanently increases my health, which we need for the run. This is Altered Farm. The basically the goal of the quest is just to kill these three waves of three bandits. So we are super overpowered with our master longbows, so we don't need to do much. That six in the corner is our combat multiplier, basically our combo meter. And it goes, it naturally decays over time unless you damage things. So our guard friends, we're going to give a, a little love zap. As we kill these guys and then wait for them to respawn. Some more bandits are approaching. We're actually going to get out of the way just in case. It's because uh, the guards have been known to fire their their crossbows before, and uh, 
be a bit of a menace. But luckily, no such things happen. So we're gonna face off against Whisper again. And we're gonna embarrass her. She wants us to flourish and then we're gonna hit her with a bow once. And then twice. Oh, quest complete. And we use the ages of uh, will and strength potions there because we had 12 combat multipliers, so it gave us 12k XP. Yeah, since we have the Rod of Champions now, uh, fishing is much easier. And in addition, just if there's like a, one of those ripple effects, it means that there's something there. Um, which tends to be a lot easier than just sort of fishing anywhere else. Um, you may also notice that I'm skipping past a few like chests and fishing spots. It's because they'll usually contain things that aren't required or don't add anything to sort of a, a percentage. Because there is no in-game percentage counter. It's sort of been a rule agreed by the community sort of thing. But um, Which is why there may be things that I do in this run that may not have been done before or vice versa. Just because we, we're only human, we still learn. So as that trader kindly points out, there's a bandit toll, and we're going to fix the toll by um, killing a couple of guys. Um, so the actual only requirement to finish this quest is to kill that leader there. We're also going to kill a couple of the, these guys as well, just to give us a little bit more XP. And then as soon as they do, they'll start running off, apart from that guy. See, they're all running off because the boss is down. So we'll just head on here. I'm just going to rearrange my hotbar a little bit. Cool, so we're going to head back to the guild and we're going to use all that newly fangled XP to get some upgrades and we're going to make ourselves much stronger. I won't go over all of the upgrades here, but I'll sort of talk about them ad hoc as we uh, as we do stuff. So We will be using the Hotshot Glitch again to um, to max out our Assassin Rush just because it's the far. it makes us go very fast. More damage in ranged combat. And make your shots more magic power increases your capacity for storing mana. So we're going to hover over here. Cool, there we go. So we need to. Or our hot bar a little bit just because it's a bit all over the place. Cool, oh, that'll do. Put the red meat here for later. And the reason I waited before traveling back to the guild is because um, this map great would color skate. So these color skates is that sort of teleport port point that you see there. Um, so it's, you may have seen me before teleport to like between Bowstone South and the guild and stuff. So um, rather than heading straight to the next quest, we instead uh, wanted to head here first just because it's on the way and it saves us having to take that whole trip back. Um, in some runs, you may have noticed that we go to the Chamber of Fate and get um, the Sword of Aeons, but we actually don't need it for this quest. So as part of that, we're going to have our summon creature transfer into a hob, which we'll need for later. Because um, when you use summon, it basically, for us, it acts like a portable hitbox, which is handy because we can use it to clip through some walls and gates. We won't be doing it quite as much as any percent, but we will do it a couple of times, so keep your eyes out. This is Trader Escort. We have two traders, and then we have this guy who was bitten by a Balverine, which is like, I guess, this game's version of werewolves. Um, we're actually going to do a terrible job of escorting, um, so... We currently have three traders, only one of them is going to be alive, and it's not even just because, like, oh, we leave them to die because it's faster. We're actually going to willfully kill them. Um, just skip some dialogue, but we'll 
across that when we get there. This spell that's made me very red and angry is called uh, Berserk, and it's probably, I'd argue, the most broken spell in the game. So let's see what it does. It increases your damage, increases your attacking and movement speed, increases the amount of damage you take. Any damage you take will increase the amount of damage you do. You're not able to die while in it. Um, use it to get this silver key, which is always a plus. Um, there's probably other things I'm forgetting, but yeah, it's just an all-round super useful spell for both movement and combat. So we're at the camp, and in order to skip some dialogue because they wait here, we're going to put these guys to sleep a little bit. So the quest doesn't mind as long as you keep at least one of the traders alive. And all those crunching sounds were me eating the red meat because there's a demon door coming up. And demon doors are essentially just like um, doors that want us to solve a riddle or like do a task for them. And this next upcoming demon door wants us to be overweight and sort of gorge and enjoy ourselves. So we've uh, eaten the red meat. So we're our uh, sort of weight category right now is obese. So we're going to do that there. And we'll also quickly fish up the silver key. The good thing is, is that when you're in fishing, um, it actually pauses everything else. So luckily, those uh, bandits won't catch up to us. And you may also notice that spell I use there, which is Force Push, and that just pushes enemies back. That's good for sort of getting some breathing room in order to assess a brush. Uh, it can also be used to animation cancel, but we'll get to that later. I, know, I understand that right now everything's sort of very um, description heavy, but it'll sort of it will smooth out as the run progresses. That was sort of the mini boss, which is Nerf Troll, and luckily because we're super powerful, we're doing like four to five hundred damage per hit, which is super handy. So before handing in this quest, we will chat for this demon door. Very happy with what we've done. He'll let us in. So we're going to hand in the quest here and head to Oakvale. Um, just coming up here in a second. Ah. Oh, another quest down. Me. Um, so here's another blue mushroom which this guy wants to buy for a 1500. But unfortunately I'm really poor so I'm just going to steal it. It's actually funny, um, the... The cost of buying it is 1500 gold, but the cost of stealing it, or the fine to pay for stealing it, is only 750. That's sort of one of those things where it's better to steal and ask for forgiveness, but we didn't even do that, we just sort of took it and ran. But um, he won't be too upset about it. We're going to head up here and grab a book, and then we're going to use a bed to sleep so it's night time because the next lot of fist fighters is coming up and also another pub game which is coin golf which I am equally bad at so we'll see if I choke here or not but um, I guess if there's any donors or anything uh, now would be a perfect time absolutely we've got a five dollar donation from gaming ridge 334 he says oh, imagine what wow. fable would look like in unreal engine <laughs> winky face oh dear so this, this, this is a thing someone did like a year ago right um, kind of, yeah, uh, yeah, there's someone who keeps doing a post about, um, about Fable and Unreal Engine, they've been sort of teasing it for about a good few years, and they've just sort of changed the screenshots a little bit, but nothing's actually come out of it. I actually feel like that's not Gaming Ridge, don't, I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like that might have been the Fable historian, Get your tinfoil hats on. So, so far this is going well, almost too smoothly, so I might end up choking here. You 
Well, that is probably one of the best <laughs> coin golfs I've ever done. So, um, so much for mouth and luck. There's actually one later on which removes the obstacles, but is somehow harder. So we'll see how that one goes. But that's like right at the end of the run. So for now, we're going to talk to Mr. Fist Fighters. I think he actually has a name. It's like Rendor or Rund or something. Um, a lot of characters in this game sort of don't have names. Like our hero doesn't actually have a name. Um, there's a book called Trials of Arkham which sort of vaguely describes his story, but he's always ever called like the hero or like the lad or something. So as a community, we've collectively collectively decided to call him John Fable, because I mean, is there anything better? Son of Brom Fable. I'm going to move backwards here a little bit just so he runs towards me rather than sort of like slowly inching closer and closer. Ouch. This is just what us Brits do as for a pastime. Cool, now that's completed, we're going to steal one more book and then we're going to do the Ghost Pirate Quest. Well, actually, we're not going to do it, we're going to skip it completely. You took something, you robber. Guards. The guards are going to not be happy the fact that I stole that, but we can just pay off that fine. So here's the treasure of the Ghost Pirate Quest. So there's this guy who turned out to be a pirate and he wants us to deliver some treasure to his wife. Um, but we're not actually going to do that. Now that we have the quest, we're actually going to just head over and pick up his final reward, which instantly completes the quest. Nope, oh, there's the fine. So digging up at this grave here, we get the obsidian great axe and a silver key. Now the quest is complete. We did have to speak to the ghost pirate just because... Um, Otherwise, it would have not registered the quest as started, so we would have had, we would have, would have lost one uh, point to our quest completed total. So we're going to talk to this guy who's the leader of the chicken kicking competition. Um, and yes, there is chicken kicking in this game. Um, we luckily only need to do it once to hit 150 points. So all we need is 150 points, so we'll kick the chicken to... It'll probably be 50 points three times. Have a look. Well done. Well done. So apparently that one counted as 50. It's fine, but like... Um, the in-game explanation is that his eyesight isn't what it used to be, but I think it's just bad, like, picking up of the... Uh, Bad hitboxes. Cool, but now that's done, we can head over to... Back to the guild. So there's two blue mushrooms here. One is able to be fished up and the other one is held by this guy who he was at a party and he found this girl that he really liked and he wants to give a note to her and then she'll give a note back and then they'll all live happily ever after. Unfortunately, I'm really socially awkward so I don't really want to talk to him. We get another blue mushroom. We'll just fish up this silver key over here.
So we'll just head over to the other side of the guild. Also, while we do, I'm going to put on the lamp onto one of our hot pass slots. Um, so this demon door is like, oh, your path is dark, only a light will reveal it and you are not bright enough. Which a lot of people, probably myself included, probably thought that meant you had to be like really good. But literally, it's, it's taken literally, which is, you need to have your lamp on. stuck on the stepping stones there and we unfortunately have to turn off the lamp even though it's slower um, just because um, the very next quest is one of the few instances of us having to sort of sneak past people so sort of irony that like we have to use the lamp and then immediately after is the first stealth quest sort of just our luck but um, we head over here back to Oakville and we'll do the uh, bandit camp quest. So story-wise, um, Mace thinks that she, he's found some info about our sister who he believes is alive. Uh, so we'll go head over to this bandit camp and see if we can figure out what happened. And spoiler alert, she's not joined the bandits, but she's under Twin Blade's sort of wing, who's uh, one of the next bosses. But she's, she's alive and well, um, also missing her eyes after the bandits cut it out. But one thing at a time. So I'm really bad at stealth, so we're just going to kill these guys. This is our idea of stealth. You can sneak past them and everything, but as long as you kill them in one hit, all is well. They also can whistle while they're dead, which is fairly impressive. Um, a little Easter egg if you didn't notice is that they also whistle the Fable theme, which I always found cute. Uh, so we need to interact with this chest here. So we need to pick up the bandit gear. We can clip through the gate. But we need the bandit gear later on for another quest, so um, we will be picking up all the pieces. And we need to wiggle past there in order to get in here. Probably shouldn't have used Berserk because it's not really that required because we need to uh, cancel out open the chest here. For better or for worse, that is one thing like digging or using chests or fishing and everything will usually take out, you out of a lot of states so it will cancel slow time, it will take you out of Berserk, all of that sort of thing. So we see, sort of need to time them a little bit carefully. Let's see if the traders are asleep or awake. They are awake. Hopefully they don't immediately. Cool. Well, you think we can do a special offer for you, sir? We'll go pick up some French chicks for later. <coughs> and here is probably the most difficult of the pub games, which is Spot the Edition. In fact, it's so difficult that I'm, I've made the executive decision that I'm going to cheat a little bit. And when I have a minute, Well, actually, I'm going to cheat in two different ways. So when I have a minute, I'm going to get my phone out. I'm going to, get, going to get my camera app ready because this is basically Spot the Edition, which is like um, them wanting us to see what has been added. And the later rounds get really confusing and difficult, and I'm really bad at it. So we'll see how this goes. But I need to also use slow time, which is going to slow down the timer. For the first few, I will do nice and legit, minus the slow time. So we've got a wasp, a boot, and a hob. So I might just be muttering these to myself, so forgive me in advance. You won the round. Sword, Balvary, Wasp Tree. You won the round. 
All right, hobfish, forge room, tree. All right, I'm now going to start cheating. I'm just taking a picture of what the <laughs> what they were, so. Last one. Gold. Well, bring I think it's the hob. Yep. Cool, that's done. And that's the last time I'll be cheating at a pub game, I promise. Oh, so we picked up the edges of my potion and we need to now cause a distraction. Oh, that was almost bad. Now we've opened up the gate in Windblade's area. Well done. The gate is open. You can go to Twinblade's area now. <coughs> Sorry, I have a bit of a tickly throat. It's not COVID, I promise. It's just very early in the morning. Cool, so we're going to take advantage of um, Berserk here and the mechanic in that us doing more damage, the more damage we take. So we're actually going to let Twinblade hit us a little bit and then with Berserk and Multi-Strike, we get instantly kill him. So we did about 2,000 damage here and bearing in mind about 20 minutes ago with our bow, we had to take a few seconds to do 300 damage. Definitely a step up. Did I not sleep? Oh, I guess I didn't. All right. Take a short deviation to fix that. You have reached familiar status. All right, so we'll do things in a little bit of a funny order, but we'll see how it goes. Because we do need to wait a minute or so for the fist fighters to spawn. So we're going to pick up a book, chat to Maze. He's going to ask us to find the archaeologist. Uh, cool. Let's head back to Twinblade's camp and hopefully they should have spawned. Uh, there is actually a weapon you can pick up there called the scimitar, which is one of the bandit weapons. They can like put it down at random. Um, it's quite inconsistent. I was just sort of quickly checking the floor to see if we got lucky, but no, no such luck here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a bandit to follow us, and the guy should be spawning any second now. Ah, yep, there they are. This guy's following us. And we're going to now cheat at the fist fighters. So obviously we're only allowed to use our fists. But they didn't say anything about getting someone else to follow us. So this is how we uh, how we go do the fist fighters. Uh, so this guy here. I think he might actually be an archer. Looks like he has a steel longsword. Ignore the dead bodies. Part of the decor. Cool, fist fight is complete.
So now I'm going to head over and find the archaeologist. We've picked up another agent of will potion. Um, we would normally use it during the white balverine, but um, we can actually use it a little bit later than that, just because there's a place we'll get even more combat multiplier. But for now, there's a demon door we shall clip through nice and easily. And here's the archaeologist. And similar to what we did earlier on in Greatwood, we're going to head to the next map first before we uh, to well to unlock a color escape before we head over there. So. Before we do that, we are going to, um, I guess, commit a bit of religious tax fraud. I don't know how you call it. Uh, we're going to defraud the church a little bit. So um, here's the Temple of Avo, and we get good points for donating gold. And if we donate enough gold, we get a legendary weapon called the Sentinus. But we're not going to actually donate any money. So we have 53k gold here, and we're going to max out our donation. Wait for it to go. It does sort of go up exponentially, so you see the number get larger, quicker, and quicker. The God. And then we interact with the altar, and then because we've done that, it won't actually take away any gold, so we still have all of that gold that we had earlier. But we still reap the rewards, including the uh, the good points and the uh, legendary weapon. Uh, this dig spot is a little bit finicky, so I'll have to go in there. I'm not sure. Oh, case in point. They wanted me to dig, but then when I did, it play nice. Go do a quick bit of fishing here for a Wool Master's elixir. Oh, so we're in Nothole Glade, so we'll go ahead to the guild. So we'll dutifully, dutifully do as the guildmaster requests us. And we're going to face off against the White Balverine here. Um, and the quest name is White Balverine, as you may, may gather. Um, so... First thing we need to do is kill these Balverines outside. Um, they spawn based on if you're looking away from them. They um, say it took us a while to notice. I've been saying the same script since 2016. Um, but yeah, it did take us a little while to realise that you had to look away before we thought it was RNG on when they did or didn't spawn. Here's a white Balverine. I'm going to force push him. We just basically need to hit him 10 times with anything, so... Force push does two hits, so we'll do that. And then we'll cancel his animation and gain a little bit of combat multiplier. And while he's running here, we'll grab a silver key. Cool, so we now have a silver augmentation which we can use to actually damage the white Balverine. 
There'll be one more phase of us hitting him. And then we just need to look away from him. So this is a physical shield, this blue outline and that white noise you hear. Um, this is a pretty useful spell in that it stops you from taking any damage. It takes it away from your mana pool rather than your health pool. Um, it also has the added advantage that if you take a hit, it won't reduce your combat multiplier. Go ahead over here and we're going to snipe the white Valverine. And we're just trying to hit him for a thousand damage each time. Cool, and then he's dead. Go grab his XP and then get the hell out of here. Cool, and because of that, we are now given the glory of flight. Uh, well, we're given an invitation to fight in the arena. But before we do that, we need to do pub games. So this is card sorting, and I'm pretty good at it to not toot my own horn. But uh, we'll see if I choke here or not. I think I lost a few minutes here when I did this run in 2018. And need to get under 25 seconds. Cool, so nine seconds to get the last one. Hopefully, it should be fine. No problems. Perhaps you'll come back and play some more. We're just going to quickly steal a book here. Ignore me, fellow citizen. I'm going to head back to the guild and we're going to do a hob killing contest. Um, and this is where we're going to use all of the uh, ages of potions uh, so before we do that go grab some upgrades so go use a uh, hotshot glitch on this get level 3 force push they're going to take the quest and boast which will take us outside We're just going to quickly head over to Orchard Farm. I guess um, if there's any upcoming incentives apart from my own or anything else that wanted to be plugged, go for it. Yeah, we can do that. So some of you might be thinking, oh, I'm not interested in this kill and save the people thingamajig that some people do. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got quite a few incentives that are coming up today and into tomorrow. So of course the the sea of kill whisper incentive for this run so uh, uh spare whisper at 305 dollars and kill whisper at 165 dollars so just for the low low price of 150 dollars you can have whisper be killed and i hear that's a thing that runners do so you could maybe do that then uh coming up in grand theft auto 5 uh we've got the the ending choice so we've got um kill michael kill trevor or the third way um and there's, there's some pretty close ones between Trevor and the third way there. Uh, and then, even after that for Trackmania, you can uh, choose which language um, that we're going to have <clears throat> for the, the, the car skin. Um, so that has currently got Sweden at, at the top with $95. But if you love France, and believe me, if there's one thing that ESA does, it's France um, for the low price of $15. No, $25. You can probably have that one. Um, 
And then some things like like eat into like tomorrow morning, you're probably thinking, it's like, oh, what, what's the next bonus game? It's Mary Kate and Ashley licensed to drive, and that's only got $106 left to make. That's practically free. You could get that right now. Um, and then the, the probably the, the 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 strangest thing that's that's coming up quite uh, quite soon tomorrow morning is going to be for Crash Mind over Mutant, and and it's it's two players per controller, not two player one controller, not two players two controllers. It's well, it kind of. But the idea is that so so Pete and CD are going to use one half of their controller and one half of the other person's controller at the same time. I don't know what that does, but that's going to be pretty interesting. So there are lots of things um, to donate for. That's sitting at about seven hundred and seventy out of fifteen hundred dollars for that. So there are lots of things to uh, to get your money in for. Don't forget, all the donations go to save the children directly as well as that if you're like oh that's a bit tricky you do subs on on twitch um twitch prime cheers telling people who might be able to help and and get the the message out there and there are prizes as well there are things that you could if you donate a hundred dollars and you get that the mary kate run going you can be in for a playstation 5 which is amazing or for 75 dollars you can get a steam deck or for 50 dollars you could get a switch or a retro tank 5 which you would definitely want to do because if you want to play games that aren't in HD and you're not using an OSSC, you probably Retro Tank 5 is the way to go. And no one likes new games. We're, we're all about retro here, right? Like PlayStation, Xbox, original era, that's where it's at. Or, or earlier as well. There are tons of things uh, um, to, to, get, to get money towards and raise awareness for. So any donations coming through and support would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of great incentives, a lot of great games coming up here. Um, so, uh, I guess to explain what we're doing here, we have three minutes to kill um, the Hobbs, and it's basically an auto-scroller, but what we are also doing is um, trying to keep Whisper at bay and stop her from killing it, because it is a quote-unquote contest, despite the fact that it's 25 to 1 at the moment. Um, one thing you may also notice that I'm using Force Push on dead bodies, and this is actually... Um, I guess a kind of bug where the damage check doesn't actually see if the body is like the thing that you're pushing is alive or not so you can just force push dead bodies and build up combat multiplier we're just sort of doing that as we go along to boost things while we wait for hops to spawn and you kind of want to get them all bundled up so you do as much quote unquote damage with the force push as you can Should be fine. Oh, it does slow down the time out today, I learned. So we are a little bit lower than we would like. Ideally, we would be at about 65 combat multiplier, but we can make do. Oh. Um. Yeah, so this is the second to last time we'll encounter Whisper. The last time will be at the end of the arena, which is when that donation incentive to kill or spare her will come through. So you've probably got about 10 minutes to go. So if you do want that, get your donos in. But we just hit 65 exactly, which I will happily take. Go use that. Then head back to the guild. And to do this, uh, well, now with all that XP, we've got about 135k XP just in will alone, so we're going to be quite well off here. Um, we are also going to use Hotshot Glitch a few times to max out some stuff. So, I'm going to max out Berserk. One. I'm going to max out Inflame. That's very important. Multi Strike, and if we can be cheeky. I guess we have to get physical shield three now. Cool. All right. And then, yep, that last one. Cool. That's fine. Um, so we'll rearrange our spells just a bit. 
and head to the whole glade. So yeah, we'll be doing the arena next, which is a lot, a lot of combat, and luckily now we are super powerful and we have a whole bunch of stats and we're gonna one shot everything and be doing damage in the thousands so pretty useful pretty useful just had to have to head over here i guess it's a good point to mention now that um you may notice there's a distinctive lack of keyboard sounds compared to last time um it's not because i'm cheating it's um Basically, we recently allowed um, using auto hotkey because by default, um, rolling um, can only be set to like a key rather than the scroll wheel. So we've got a um, an auto hotkey thing which just sets it to um, a scroll wheel. It is not like pure cheating in that it's like we only allow one key, one command sort of thing. Where is the trader? You're not here. I guess not. I wanted to do a. A name change. I've not, not actually seen him not appear there. Interesting. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. But yeah, it's mostly just for accessibility purposes because we were noticing that a lot of runners were getting sort of bad hands. Oh, hello. They were getting like bad hands and stuff from uh, having to spam R and escape and all of that for several hours. Get potion. Right plate mail. Um, we can push that guard down, but it only saves a few seconds. What I'm really interested in, in this blackjack, uh, it's not actually part of the run at all, it's just for fun. And I've already lost. <laughs> Let's see if we can give that another go. Oh, we've got 15. Do we, do we take a hit? Or do we fold? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll give it one more go. Alright, so we're at 20. And we win, yay, finally. The biggest dub of the run. So we'll push this guard just a little bit. Probably won't do that much, but might as well. Cool, so uh, before you saw how long it took me to reach 65 combat multiplier. It's going to take a little bit shorter than that to reach it now. Again, we'll be just using that uh, force push trick to uh, build, our cup, build up our combat multiplier. It's like the perfect place for it because there's a lot of enemies in a very small radius. We're already at 77 multiplier. And the next wave is going to be the hob wave. So we're just going to use inflame to kill that. Inflame is like an AoE fire spell. That he's being with large, lots of enemies, large uh, amounts of enemies with low health. Oh. You can come over any time this week. Thank you. Cool, that's the whole wave done. Not the cleanest of waves, but I will take it. We're already at 106 multiplier. Um, you may also notice that I put summon on multiple different keys at once, and that's just for later, where we'll um, we'll just use summon because um, essentially it doesn't have a cooldown. It gives you 3 XP times your multiplier each time you use it and it has a very low cost. You can kind of just use that multiple times to get a whole bunch of XP. 
but we'll do that a little bit later. Also, Whisper's here. Um, speaking of Whisper, I do believe there is a couple of donations. Yeah, things are getting... Well, I, they're, they're harder than they were before. Let's put it like that. <laughs> we've, got, we've got five dollars from, from Win Tilda, who says, Killing Whisper is for cowards. Real gamers spare her. Much a loaf, friends. Thank you. That, that's five dollars to sparing Whisper. And then we got fifty dollars from Nuckdiverse. He says, here's to the incredible Fable community and the friends and memories I've made here. Smiley face. Much love to ESA for allowing us to showcase this run. Save the children. And that is going towards Killing Whisper, which is now only $95 <laughs> under. So, like, I've, well, we've got minutes to do this? Yeah, a so? couple minutes to go. Right, $95, couple of minutes, easily done, right? Let's, let's make things exciting, people. Yeah, it always tends to be very close. Uh, I'm surprised at how many people donate to Spare Whisper. I guess they really care about those 10 seconds. But um, I'm not complaining. Um, so these undead here are actually kind of unique in that they're the only undead that fall down before dying. Normally they just kind of like explode into popcorn. Which makes things really annoying because them exploding into popcorn is really nice for like animation management. Which means that like we uh because if, if an enemy is on the floor and you do enough damage to kill it, it won't actually die. Um you have to knock it down a second time. There is um something you can do with the timing, but it is a little bit finicky. Um I may also start summon spamming in a little bit, so if you do suffer from like any kind of like sensitivity to bright lights you may want to look away for a little bit while while the loud noise goes on what loud noise you may ask you'll know you'll know it when you hear it that one so yeah we can just do that on multiple keys at once and just gain a whole bunch of xp So if all goes well, all right, almost. So you can actually get all those guys to die in like three in flames and kill them all at once, which is super satisfying. But no such luck today. It's fine. I try not to lose any sleep over it. And also because our um, berserk rank is super high. Um, our chance of beheading is like 20% or something, so it's pretty good. And a behead instantly kills a, an enemy, so that's pretty, pretty handy. The next wave is Earth Trolls, and you saw that it took me a good couple seconds to kill them before. I think maybe 5 or 10 seconds. So that's that one dead. That's that one dead. So uh, yeah, we just do like absurd amounts of damage. We're basically almost capped out in terms of the amount of damage we do. We're sort of focusing on damage and speed and then we sort of max out everything else afterwards as a as a secondary thing. So in this next round, there's the Rock Trolls, which are surprisingly um, resilient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stand in these Rotor Blades. Um, and that's going to damage me four tiles or like eight times in a single hit which is going to massively increase the amount of damage we're doing with Berserk. Which means that we sort of hit through their armor. Cool. Um, I'm also just point out I'm talking to Whisper here to skip the dialogue of the announcer which is kind of handy. Um, and then we're facing up against the Arachnox. So, um, I think in maybe a, m a minute or so, we are going to be killing or sparing Whisper. So, if there's any last minute donos, go for it. 
But other than that, I think we can probably get ready to close it. We're still sitting at $95 apart. Like, that's like 10, 10 people needing 10, less than $10, like nine fifty. Less than the price of a, a Max Bagger. Ooh, I got hit there. That is not the best of things, but we should be able to make do. So let's check our XP. Uh, we're a little bit short, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. Cool, so that's the Arachnox stage. So, unless there's any last minute donos, I think we're ready to close it off because Whisper is about to meet her fate, whatever that may be. So, was it Spare that won? Or was it Kill? Well, it depends how honest you want. It's Spare. Spare won $310. Uh, Kill was behind with $215. It was just over $500 raised on this bid war alone. Very good. Thank you, everyone. So Whisper will, will, will be spared for now. Um, stay alive. But um, yep, that's the arena done. So I am a little bit short on XP. And by a little bit, I mean about like 400k. But there's a few things we can do if push comes to shove. Um, we also have Hot Shot Glitch, which we can use to max out a lot of things. Go head back to the guild. And we're going to try and max out as much as we can. We'll focus on like... The, um, the the spells and stuff that we actually use, and then as the secondary stuff, we'll get to like stuff like uh, I don't know, like turncoat or like um, ghost sword rather. Guile increases your stealth and improves your trading skill. So we're going to use Hotshot Glitch to max out, because some spells require you to be good or evil to max out. Um, but you can use Hotshot Glitch to skip that, which is very handy. Max out Summon. I think we should be okay. It may just be Divine Fury and Infernal Wrath that we have to uh, out. Fact. What we'll do is we'll see if we can be cheeky. So if we can just hot shot glitch everything, that would be ideal, and then we don't need to worry about it. Oop. One. Any time this week. And there we go, that's another one. Oh no, we've actually gone backwards to XP. Okay, cool. We'll leave those at three. Um And that's that maxed out. Let's just check to see what we have left. Okay, cool. So it's just the last levels of Divine Fury and Inferno Wrath. That's okay. Um, it did take a little bit longer than we wanted to there, but it's fine. We'll head to Barrowfield. So we're going to do the Trader Massacre quest. And we basically just need to kill off a bunch of uh, guards and bandits. Well, not bandits, uh, villagers. It is one of those evil quests. Um, the good thing is that there is evil and good quests. And there's only actually two in the game that give you a choice on which one to do. Other than that, you can do whichever quest you desire. We're going to try and inflame to get as many of them in one spot as we can. Oh, 
And we just kill up all these last guys here. This is one of the few unskippable cutscenes, so they ask us whether we want to kill or spare him. It doesn't actually really make any difference, but do it anyways. Cool. And we're going to head up to the Grey House and we're going to find our sister and she's going to tell us where our mother might be because our mother is alive story-wise um, and she's being held in the prison by Jack of Blades who's sort of like the big, big bad boss of the game. We've not actually seen him yet. We only kind of really see him just before we kill him and as we kill him sort of thing. So um, we get for skipping cutscenes. Right, we will pick up the Ages of Will potion here just because we are teeny weeny bit short on XP. I imagine we can max it out later on. It only requires about 120k XP. And now we will head to um, the guild to pick up one of the quests that was left for us. And then we'll head to Oakvale and we'll do a couple of side quests. So yeah, right now, apart from um, a couple of things, um, in terms of quests, we've not actually done all too many side quests. Like, we've really only ever done um, Hob Killing Contest and Trader Massacre. That's going to change. We're going to do a long, long string of um, of side quests and sort of wrap up some loose ends. So the game looks like it's crashed here. It actually hasn't. It's just, it takes a while to load here, so don't panic. I'm not 100% sure why it does that, but it does seem to do it after um, entering... After finishing the arena, I think it might be something to do with the um, the murder with a twist NPCs. For some reason, they just take a long time to load. We're gonna head back to where that cheat was at the start of the game. Here's a guard. And we're gonna head back to the bandit camp, and we are going to do one of the. Uh, more fun quest of the game, which is Lost Trader. Let me just quickly reorganize my spell bar a little bit. That there. Low time here. And multi arrow here. Actually, we'll swap these. We do want to use lightning more than we want to use slow time. Slow time can screw us over in a few spots. So heading down to the cliff top path. And in abandoned road is where the um, is where all of the uh, the bandits and stuff are for what is it lost trader? Yeah, lost trader. So normally we have to sort of go. So it's basically take him from one side of the map to the other. And like the previous escort quest, we're not going to exactly do it as intended. So we would normally have to kill all these bandits. And normally the guy following you is super slow because. He stops every time that there's a bandit there and runs away and all of that. So we're gonna we're gonna give him a little push forward. So here he is. And in order to push him forward, we are going to literally force push him. So he is a little bit stuck. See if we can back this way. And then we're gonna keep pushing him. There we go. Hope you like that voice line, you can hear it a few times. Cool. And then we have safely rescued him. We are in points for efficiency, not for safety. Stable way. Um, cool. And then we're going to head to Trader's Camp. Sorry, Twin Blades Camp or Trader Rescue. Getting my, my words mixed up. Um, we're going to try and do this one a little bit risky. Um, so we normally have to, again, kill a bunch of bandits, rescue these traders and take them back to the exit.
They'll kill these leaders. Oh, hang on. Is that what I think it is? It is. Hang on. So we now just picked up a bandit crossbow. That is super rare. <laughs> if you got some time, I'll show that off later. We're just going to push these guys away and then we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to sort of hope that these guys are going to be okay. Hopefully these guys will follow me rather than the traders. They up they are. Like, I think that's one of the good things about the AI here is that they can sort of follow us, and then the traders will sort of be so far behind that they don't take notice of them. Oh, so that is that complete. We just need to wait for them to reach the exit. We could probably force push them, but I reckon they would probably get stuck on each other. So maybe not the best idea. And we're going to head back to Twinblade's tank because there's an assassin. So the murder with a twist quest is that there's two brothers. There's a guard and a bandit. Uh, a guard and an assassin. And um, I think there's an inheritance that the guard wants. And because um, because the assassin tends to... Or because their mother tends to prefer the assassin, she uh, the guard wants this man dead. So we can either take a bribe or say no they say no just to annoy them and then he is going to become one with the dead and we'll just head back and hand that quest in and then we can do break the siege yeah I got potions cool Cool, that's that quest handed in. So we're going to do Break the Siege. So we can try clipping through this gate with summon. It is a little bit finicky, so don't hold it against me if I don't get it first try. It does actually speed things up as well because it stops a lot of the um, the traders, oh sorry, a lot of the bandits from spawning. But if all goes well, we should just be able to clip through this gate, kill three bandits and quest is complete. Which we have done beautifully. And that's quest complete. Nice and easy. And in doing so, that actually unlocks a couple of things. So um, now, uh, sorry, let's head to which would color escape. Now Twinblade is going to send some assassins after me after embarrassing him earlier on. And also the archery competition will be open. Um, we will kind of quote unquote do that. So speaking of, there is one assassin that spawns right here. As long we, as long as he, ugh. as long as we kill all of them at least once, we will get the reward, which is a treasure clue. Um, the treasure clues, which you may or may not have seen me pick up once or twice, is um, are used to get the frying pan, which is the reward for the treasure clue quest. I like the, I think the quest is officially named "Find the Hidden Booty." No comments there. So that is our 15th silver key, which is just fortunate enough because back inside that demon door is a 15 silver key chest. So we clip through it. Said. We will clip through it. Thank you very much.
Um, there's also a book on the floor that we want. So we're sort of trying to um, maximize our, our stay here in Witchwood. Um, we're also manipulating the time because the fourth Fist Fighters round will spawn soon. Um, or the fourth and final one. And it would be fine if not for the fact that uh, you fight against an Uthog Glade Chieftain. And he has about a thousand health. And with our current damage, we'd end up doing... It'd probably take about 50 punches, which is really slow. So what we're going to do, because we are already heading this way, we're getting one of these guards to follow us. And if you remember what happened earlier with the bandits, you may see where this is going. There is a slight change to it, though, in that the guard attacks a lot faster than the bandit would, um, which can risk soft-locking the quest because he can kill them before the fade-out happens. So, uh, also, sorry, just to detour a little bit. Um, we're going to pull out the sword and the stone. It requires us to either have max stats or to increase our stats by a lot. So we just maxed out our stats and do that. We also killed these guys to skip the dialogue. Um, but yeah, back in my original trail of thought, um, yeah, the guards can soft lock because they attack so quickly. They actually kill the fighters before they have a chance for the cutscene to spawn, which kind of like locks you in a state of the quest being half complete. So we're gonna actually get him to make, bring him to the ring, make him wait, then make him follow us at the last round, and then he'll be able to make light work of the um, the chieftain. There's also another assassin coming up here. There's that, the fist fighters just spawned. Um, can I kill this guy without incurring a fine? No, I cannot. Oh, that guard is looking. Oh, yep, yeah, he's very unhappy with us. Uh, we're actually going to get kicked out of town here. It probably is actually a time save because it means that the, um, the chieftain of the fist fighter is going to be right at the ring rather than being wherever he is. We're just going to take a little stroll over here. I'm not going to use Berserk here just because. We have to wait for the um, the guard to follow us anyways. So what I'll do is... Oh, hello. That guard, uh, that guy just wants us to hit him with an arrow. It can actually be any projectile. It doesn't have to be an arrow, but arrow is just the easiest thing. So we'll head over here. Make him wait. wait. And we'll start this. Um, this last fist fighter one is also interesting in that the um, the amount of hits these all uh, guys all take is fairly uniform in that they all take eight punches. So there's no like difficulty scaling up. The only thing that scales up with difficulty is the amount of damage they do to you, and they don't actually do a lot of damage, but it's like. It's just an amount of um, hits, so it's two hits later on. So if there's two, if we get hit twice, we get disqualified, and that would lose us many, many minutes. So we'll try and avoid doing that. So just maybe one or two more after this. You're supposed to stay inside the ring. I think this is probably the last one. You're supposed to stay inside the ring. Oh, yep. Think so. Oops, so we're going to ask this guy to follow. And then he's going to... Oh, no, this way. This way, buddy. Thank you. And that's this fight was complete. So we're going to just quickly pop into that demon door and get the reward. And then we're going to head to... 
believe it's Bowstone South, and we're going to hand in those books from the book collection. Um, so a lot of the loose ends that we did earlier on are, are being tied up slowly but surely. So we are going to use bed to change it to daytime. Then we're going to speak to the barber. So the beardy baldy quest, he basically wants us to dress in a specific way or have our hair set in a specific way to quote unquote impress his daughter. Um, the plot twist is that he doesn't actually have a daughter um, and he just wanted to make heroes like us look stupid but we have to oblige him anyways. There is actually a, a new more hidden ending that was found recently which is that after the um, after he gives you the second or the third hairstyle, you can actually um, change your hairstyle and then talk to him again. And then he'll just admit he was lying and give us a different reward, sort of like a quote unquote bad ending. Uh, it was found semi recently by, I believe, Surya here, along with me. So we found the dialogue for it, but we couldn't figure out a way to trigger it. But I believe she found um, the actual tech behind making it work. So, grab the mutton chop beard. And we just sort of teleport back and forth because it's a little bit faster than running through. Um, while we're here, we can also speak to this lady who wants the four blue mushrooms. Uh, she wants the four blue mushrooms and then she to make a potion, but then she's like, oh, I actually had a potion right here. So she was actually just wanting them for her own purposes. I guess the teeth were probably a big giveaway. So we'll grab the trader style moustache. Yeah. As we teleport in, I just want to take a minute to uh, observe our hero and how he's going to look for the next sort of 10 minutes. Wonderful. Like a scuffed farmer with a big long moustache. The farmer here ready to uh, milk the chickens or something, whatever, whatever farmers do, I don't know. So that's that quest complete. Go to Bowstone South and we can now do the book collection quest. So this is going to be a couple minutes of cutscenes where we just hand in all these books and skip them. So Mitako, if you have anything you want to read or talk about, um, by all means, go for it. Yeah, let's let's talk a bit about what's going on here. Um, so, of course, all the money raised for this event is going um, towards Save the Children. Um, so some of the things that they do to support. So one in five children across the globe are currently in conflict zones. And some of the things that, that Save the Children do to support them include uh, mental health support for children and families, um, <clears throat> baby feeding and baby arrival kits for mothers, setting up child-friendly spaces for children to play and recover from experiences they've been through. Uh, and sorting out safe passages for, for food and other supplies for, for largely affected areas and, and things like that. So all the money generated, right? And there's lots of things that we can do to support here. Um, so I didn't even mention the speedrunstore.com. So like if you, do, I mean, do you like clothes? Yep. Do, do you want to wear t-shirts with ESA branded stuff on it? Yeah, you do. And it's the 10th anniversary of, of ESA and do anniversary designs for the, the Frost and Fire logos that you'll probably have seen. Um, around the event and social media and stuff like that so seven dollars from from the merch generated is going to save the children um if you donate directly you can be in for prizes so we, i mean i said some of those bigger prizes earlier on maybe you're like you know what i just know a hundred dollars too much for me but fifteen dollars for a pin bargain twenty dollars for a plushie bargain twenty five dollars for a, one of those prints bargain and there's there's t tons of things we can do as well so like i said you can tell people, you can share it with your friends, let people know. Um, and of course, things like the um, Prime subscriptions, which are free with Amazon Prime, regular subscriptions, um, and things like that. And I see, we've got donations have come in immediately. After, of course, there, we've got another $5 from Sarah Venza, uh, who says, can we get some hashtag beard facts while we're, say, in prison? Oh, bit. oh boy. We'll see if we have time. 
Um, also, a fun drinking game. Count the number of times he says today. Or he clears his throat, this, uh, this teacher. A very effective way to get drunk. So we only have a couple books left to hand in here. Twin blade. So hopefully I've gotten all of them. We can occasionally miss one or two, but we'll hope for the best. Cool, all of them. That is the silver key for that one. That's probably the most difficult silver key to obtain. Um, it's unfortunate that that is actually a quest, so we can't skip that silver key at all. Um, we would have to get it anyways as part of completing all the quests. We're going to hand the potion to the kid who is now happy and frolicking. And we're done with Bowstone South for now. We're pretty much done with it almost entirely. We're going to head up to Bowstone North. We're, uh, we're up market now. And I'll just grab some safety potions just to make sure I'm sure it'll be fine. But you think we can do a special offer for you, sir? Um, and then I'm going to talk to this conspiracy theorist who's currently in prison, who believes that the mayor of the town, Lady Grey, is a witch or something. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll hear back from him later. And now we'll do a little bit of story with the Rescue the Archaeologist quest. Let's get them. So we'll re-equip the Solus Greatsword. We'll just run past these minions. Uglier they're not like the little yellow minions, they're much cooler. Uh, they're probably one of the tankiest enemies in the game, um, in terms of just the amount of health they have, so we can't actually one-shot them. We have to use multi-strike, but it's fine. Like With multi-strike it's fine, but we can't just one-hit them without it. What we do, we'll dig up this inconspicuous ring of roses with a silver key. Uh, that is one of the things I like about the game is that the, uh, the sort of silver key spots are such a mark, so you can generally tell where they are. Then go head up and down this windmill which will spawn one of the assassins. Oh, there he is. Grab another treasure clue here and then dig up a silver key just over there. You can see our force push is much more powerful so it gives us loads and loads of breathing room to assassin rush. I believe there is one assassin right here. Yep, indeed. There's also a moonfish here, which I'll pick up. Uh, handy for later. And then uh, this pier here is actually really hard to rush on, so I'm gonna just kill these last two guys. As long as there's no minions on the pier or like nearby him, the quest will complete. So you can even like kind of cheese it, even if you take a while, where you can just kind of force push them away, and they'll. Uh, and then it will complete the quest, which is really handy for like challenge runs like no upgrades or stick only or that sort of thing, because it's one of the few areas in the game with a timer. So just go teleport and teleport back from the prison path first to pick up potions, and also just because it's a little bit faster than running back through the map. We can do that with... Um, with maps with only one exit where we can teleport and then immediately recall back. Saves a little bit of time. Speaking of time, I think we have time when we head to Litchfield for another donation, if there is one. 
Definitely. We've got a $5 donation from Avathis again, saying posture check for everyone at home. It's made me realize that I was leaning quite heavily on my right butt cheek, because I've now stood up and stretched somewhat. Um, so, you know, you can at home tell us what your favorite way of resolving your postural things are. And just a you know, small, easy donation. And don't forget, you can put everything towards incentives. Um, so in two runs time, we've got Grand Theft Auto V, where you can influence uh, the ending between killing Michael, Trevor, and the third way. Very anonymous. Or anonymous. Very ominous there. Uh, and that's just $10 behind. But I, actually, I've got a question for you, Atem, because you'd said about sparing Whisper. And then there was a pause. And then you said, for now. <laughs> um, so, okay, maybe I can show this, but if you do spare Whisper, um, she shows up in the Oakvale Tavern, um, and she basically just like, oh yeah, no, you're always the better hero and stuff. But you can also just like hit her, and um, there's a little funny cutscene. Um, so if we have time, I might even ha be able to show that off, depending on how uh, fast or slow I am. But... Unfortunately, that is the only only thing we can do in terms of killing Whisper for the moment, unless we uh, did some nefarious modding. We we could actually probably. I wonder if we could use Eta mode to kill him. Maybe we'll think about that. We'll uh, we'll sleep on it and then come back to that if we have some time. We can maybe do the best of both worlds, but I wouldn't want to um, put all the money that the um, the spare Whisper people donated to waste. So, anyways, we're just in the Litchfield Graveyard where um, this is probably the first and not the last instance of um, undead sort of spawning around us, which is kind of annoying because it means you can't really assassin rush effectively because even if you force push, they're just going to spawn up again in front of you. So, we need to be a little bit careful. So, you may see me rolling a little bit more often than usual. Um, we also grabbed three silver keys, which are in super close proximity to each other. So, like, we've got quite a few silver keys now we're well on our way to 30 and this is an ostro he talks about his arm but yeah no uh he he wants us to find all the pieces so his armor his helmet his sword and his shield so we'll run into nostro a little bit later but that'll be like right at the end of the run um all we need to know is he's an old hero and he he shows us the way into I guess story-wise, we're heading into the secret passage through to the prison, which is why we had to rescue the archaeologists a little bit earlier. Now for the most useless cutscene in the game. That's the cutscene. Um, it does have a very important thing though, so you may have wondered why we didn't clip through the demon door. That's because the quest doesn't actually properly progress if we do so. Um, Actually, before I do, I'm going to grab this chest, otherwise I'll never remember it. Um, so yeah, it's in terms of skipping graveyard, because there's a lot of RNG, it's the only required instance of fishing. Um, it's a pretty tough one, which does kill a lot of any percent runs. It's probably like, we do call it the graveyard where all good runs go to die. But um, yeah, there's been a lot of work trying to skip it, but we've unfortunately not had much luck. We can reach this point and sort of get the, all of these guys to spawn and stuff. But then the quest doesn't actually complete, and then we're on two quests at once. Um, I believe there are a couple of bounties on for this that have been up for a good couple of years. I think there's like a $250 total bounty on figuring out a way to sk skip graveyard that saves time. Um, there is also a bounty on skipping prison, which is the next quest. But that one is even more difficult. Um, and there is a partial skip for anniversary, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That'll be, I guess, part of the... Uh, Acts. Uh, so here's the Kraken. We'll see more from him later. He just sort of missed his cue. Showed up a little bit early. Um, there are a couple of little map clips we can do here to go a little bit faster if we can uh, give those a go. They're quite handy. So we'll kill these undead. Go ahead to this bit here and we've instantly skipped through here which means we can just sort of drop down here uh, the game doesn't really handle the z-axis that well you may have noticed well, I guess the y-axis not sure which axis it is but like in terms of like moving up and down because you can see there's like no jumping or anything like that we say sort of fairly on the ground so 
once we're in the air, the game just sort of it does it does drop us down, but there's no like animation or anything for it. We can just kind of like keep doing what we're doing. Just need to kill these undead here. And there is another clip we can do here, which saves even less time and is a lot more difficult, which I like to call the illegal U-turn. So I'll see if we can pull, pull that off. Let me give it one last try. No, okay, moving on. It will literally just clip to like here, so it's not really worth it. It was worth a go, just because I like the name of it. So we reach the torture chamber where our mother is being held. So we're going to try and fear, free her and escape. Um, but unfortunately, a trap was set up by Jack, which um, which we fell into, and it will send us into prison. Which unfortunately is just a lot of waiting around for dialogue. So we got a little bit of downtime here. If you wanted to get up and stretch, have some water, go use the bathroom or anything like that. Um, also, speaking of bathroom, this guy, oh, yeah, this guy is taking a whiz with a sword in his hand, which I would not recommend to anyone. <laughs> Sounds like a dangerous thing. Um, the beard facts will come soon. Right now, we have no beard. They've shaved our head. They've removed our beard and everything like that. But we will, um, we will get to the beard facts shortly. Oh, and don't try any of that funny will stuff. It won't work in here. The boss made sure of that. So as this guy says, the um, magic will not work. So this is one of the uh, biggest like downtime moments of the run, which is on one hand is nice because it means you can like go for a pee and come back and stuff and be fine. Um, however, uh, we've looked in a lot of ways to skip this because if it did, it would save about 10 minutes. Unfortunately, we've come up pretty empty handed because the, the prison quest is extremely well built. Um, it's actually several different quests tied together, which means that um, it's actually kind of difficult to. Um, it's actually a little bit difficult to skip them because you don't have to be skipping whole quests. Um, we tried a several things, including like making it out of this jail cell, which we can do, but then when we reach the courtyard, um, it then says the warden has locked this door and we can't actually go any further, um, which is a little bit annoying. Um, so it basically thinks that you're on the prison race. We've tried using Etta mode to skip out. That doesn't work. We've tried clipping out. That doesn't work. We've tried clipping out of the... Um, past the trigger for the cutscene, which sends us to prison. But then it says you're leaving a quest area. So yeah, we've tried a whole bunch of things. There's like an absurd amount of money on the on this. It's like $300 or something. Like three three hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Um... I guess to also add, normally, if we were doing any percent, we would be running the game in French. And that's just because the dialogue in prison is much faster in French than English. It saves about 34 seconds, just based on that. Uh, English, by our luck, is obviously the slowest language. And then there's like in between like Japanese, Russian, Italian, German, um, Spanish, I think. And then I think that's it. and you get around in the torture chamber. Sounds fun. Yes, sounds fun. <laughs> Let me hear it. Oop. Right, you miserable sobs. Three, two, one. This place is mine. Move it, move it, move it. Faster. We're just doing the prison race here, and there's not really much we can do. We can't assassin rush because our spells are all disabled. But all we can do is roll for our life. I'd also like to point out that the um, all the other uh, prisoners get like trousers and uh, shoes, but we're just stuck to down to our skivvies, which is uh, pretty pretty unfortunate, but. I'll try not to take it too personally. There's another little bit of stealth, so we need to sneak past him. Find this code. Then we're going to make a noise which takes us back to the start, which is a little bit faster. 
and then we check one of these books. So this isn't actually RNG, it's always fixed, so you'll always fail it the first time, and then always get it the second time. The only exception is if you fail the first prison race and then succeed in the second prison race, you'll get the book first try. Even though it does mean two lots of prison, it's probably better than being RNG, because you could imagine if you reach this point and then just like lose several minutes just because the game said no. I believe we were promised some beard facts, so you can see right here, we have this little beard thing on our chin, which is called the chin beard. Um, it's a pretty nondescript style, except for the fact that it's the only place in the game you can get it, in the prison. Um, it has like a name and data and like stats and a description and, the, and everything, but no trader will ever offer it. So this is the only place you can get it, and you can't actually ever even keep it throughout the game, because... Um, later on when we end up on a ship we'll come back with a, a very big beard so that will replace this time to move out it's race time and you'd better put on a good show some of us have bet a lot of money on you win and we like you lose and you get around in the torture chamber that sounds fun yes sounds fun <laughs> let me hear it ha Cool, second lot of the prison race. Basically the same one as before. Nothing special. Yeah, see all the they all, all of them have like trousers and pants or trousers and shoes. I don't know why I keep getting mixed up with that. Um rolling is actually I guess to point out now because I'm looking for things to say. Um rolling is also a little bit finicky in that you can't uh, like side rolls and back rolls are a lot slower and you kind of have to like do it gradually like you kind of have to angle yourself gradually otherwise you'll just do a side roll like if I tried to immediately pan the camera there and do a roll it would it would side roll instead which is obviously slower um, we also get to try and roll in the cutscene we managed to do it successfully before we did so again here We'll listen to this guy uh, ramble, ramble on about oh, Lady Grey. More on her later. So we have the key now. It seems the warden has lost his key. And ignore all these uh, moans of what I presume is pain. I hope is pain more than anything. Um, so we're gonna just quote unquote sneak by here. And here is where our missing belongings are. I'm actually also going to show off something neat. So I'm going to actually leave this map. And then re-enter it one more time. And that's going to do something that we only discovered very recently. So if we head in here, we're now going to collect our missing belongings. Which is due to be shown in the item here. So we hit A. And then we get a second copy of it. Which doesn't actually duplicate our items. It just gives us an item called Your Missing Belongings. You can do that as many times as you want. Um, it's something that was only discovered recently, but there's just, it, yeah, it just counts it as an item called Your Missing Belongings, and you can duplicate it by leaving and re-entering the map. I guess it's something with the quest script. Cool, so we've been doing this song and dance before. We're going through the torture chamber to escape. the cliffside path. We're going to take this left path here just because otherwise undead will spawn. If we take this path though, nothing will spawn. Quite handy. And we're going to try and clip back up the way we came when we did that clip initially. Goes well. Please cooperate. Thank you. We can just roll up that hill. Try not to clip back in bounds. Uh, here's a good pot. Yep, there's a good point to go back in bounds. 
Oh, so we are going to ooh, go face off against the Kraken now. So the way the Kraken works is basically pure health phases. So, um, oh, he misses Q again. Oh, that was later than I've ever seen it. Interesting. So first thing we need to do is kill these tentacles. And then the head comes up and then we can attack that. You can see we're just not doing not any damage. We're just not doing any damage, rather. Nope. Didn't quite kill. Let me just check our stats real quick. Yeah, cool. Just making sure. I think I just charged the bow slowly. This is going to be really dramatic and like, oh, I'm dying. Ah. And then the barriers will free up. And we are finally done with prison. Neat. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of this multi arrow. Otherwise, I will forget and that will bite me in the back later. We're going to head back to the guild. And we're going to take a quest. Um, we're actually going to take a couple of quests. The first one we're going to do is Bounty Hunt, which is just like rescuing some villagers from Balston, uh, from Greatwood. Uh, we're going to take this, this, and take quest from Boast. So yeah, there's some bandits holding um, a few um, villagers to ransom. Just head down here, see what's going on. It's not what I wanted to do, but that's fine. Cool, so first thing we're going to do is try and get this guy's head off. That works as well. Just go spawn all these guys. And that's the first part of the quest done. We can make good our escape. Then we'll head down here. I also just want to quickly show off this guy's dialogue. I mean, for my leader has another hostage somewhere not that you'll defeat me. Watch this. Anyways. Uh, so this last bandit leader guy, um, if you get too close to him, he'll just instantly kill the hostage. So what we are going to do... Oh, hello. What was that? That works as well. So that means it's going to run down and then all the other bandits are going to spawn. And that's the quest complete. Uh, so there's another side quest here in Orchard Farm, which is Ghost Granny Necklace. Um, so, um, Farmer, who we helped earlier, his mother has been killed um, by a bandit. And they st stole a precious heirloom, so it's just our job to find it. A lot of the more recent quests here involve bandits. I guess it makes sense. Oh, so we'll go and speak to the ghost because her ghost is still alive. Not what I wanted. 
and we'll just head back and give that quest back and then we're going to do hob cave and also take care of a few errands around there um there's quite a few demon doors littered around the map and we're going to open sort of three in a very short period of time um one of them requires us to do an act of great evil which just means we need to do at least get at least 50 points of evil in his sight the necklace. which we are going to achieve by um eating a bunch of crunchy chicks um, i'm actually going to remove that from the hotbar because it's causing more harm than good um then go swap you and use some of these. Uh, so we will head to Gritwood Colors Gate and we will open that demon door. Then there's a demon door who wants, who will only let someone who really loves him through. So we're going to give him a perfume gift. And then there's one who requires us to have a high combat multiplier, which we will do after um, the Hob Cave quest. So first things first, talk to you. And he's going to let us in. Still not what I wanted. Thank you. What we can actually do if I show this off. If I go around this corner. You can just snap to the chest here. Yeah, the way chest me uh, mechanics work is weird. In the way they snap you to them. Um, it can sometimes lead to some usual instant, but yeah. So back to Great Wood and then we will head to Rose Cottage and grab a couple of things. So we'll open the demon door, grab a silver key, and we'll talk to um, the grandmother whose grandson has gone missing in the Hob Cave. Um, the plot twist is that he went to the cave in the he went to the cave and he doesn't actually want to be with the granny, and he's going to run away at the end of the quest. But we'll. Um, cross that when we get to it. So hello door. Then we get one of those really weird things. That happens sometimes with demon doors. I've not been able to figure out why, but it's kind of just like has a lag spike that still accepts input, so you can just kind of like dip through the door. So talk to her, she's gonna say James. James. And then shut the door on us. Good talk. Gonna dig up the silver key here. That's gonna be I think key number twenty-three, which is we're getting up there. Motion check, yep, we're good. And we're gonna take a sh sh We're going to take a slight detour, got the words out in the right order, um, into this map here because there's a silver key chest with the Wheelmaster's elixir, which we always appreciate. We're gonna just use that now because no reason why not. Yeah, there's a lot of side things you can do here, like um, you can rescue a bandit and get him to help you find some treasure, and then he asks for a cut of it and stuff, but we're just going to head straight over to um, where the boy is being held with a nymph. Which is that little giggling thing that you see flying around. Um, He's also going to have a nice introduction to the floor in just a second. So like other escort quests we've done before, we, um, we can just kind of um, rush through the map and as long as he doesn't die, he'll be fine. Because he, As long as he keeps following and has the follow logo over his head, it will be absolutely fine.
as he says, he's kind of uh, not the biggest fan of his grandmother, who's worse than Nymph apparently. And we don't see it, but he's going to grab all this stuff and run away. Um, we are also going to do the same thing, but not from our granny, but for the sake of speed instead. So, Great Wood Caves, we have an Earth Troll that's going to spawn here. Um, we've instantly gotten the combat multiplier required. Just instantly come through. I know it's been a struggle for a lot of people in the past to get into that demon door. Where they'll have to sort of kill a bunch of things in Hob Cave and then go through. So, luckily we don't need to do any of that. So we'll wrap up a few loose ends in Darkwood, so I think the first quest we have coming up here is Darkwood Disturbance, we also have a Demon Door, and we also have the Bordello, which we will get to shortly. So this guy, he just wants us to kill all his guardians, so it's these guys. Actually, what I'm going to do, a little bit of force pushing. Yeah, that should do. That should give us a lot of the XP required to max out the stuff that we missed earlier. We're going to get the Dark Wheel user's outfit, which we will use later on for another Demon Door, so we can kind of like chain Demon Door rewards together, which is nice. So here's Dark Wheel Disturbance, and it's about. Um, so Briar Rose is here, and. The minions are trying to summon a weird summoner thing, um, so we are going to try and use a ritual to stop it. So first things first, just gotta kill these guys. Um, so there is a little bit of an issue here, which is that Briar Rose is very prone to being here. And if she does, she can fall out of place, and then if she d if that happens, then um, it will actually stop her from chanting, so then she needs to be hit back into the right place. But it looks like we should be good, it's usually just that first enemy that causes trouble. While we do that, we'll quickly take a detour to get the Arkans crossbow. Like almost halfway there. It's been very quiet recently. Oh, there we go. That's that quest complete. Um, going to use a moonfish and then a golden carrot a little bit later on to change the time today. Probably should have done that a little bit later, but whatever. Um, we'll go ahead to Bowstone South.
and then teleport back. We'll just do a little bit of teleport shen shenanigans. I won't explain entirely what we're doing, um, but essentially we're trying to set our recall point to save a little trip back. So our recall point is currently set to right there. We're going to enter the bordello. So the hero has been going for a while and he needs a bit of a, re I guess, a reprieve. Um, so we're going to go on what I could call some roller coaster rides. So if you're under the age of 18, you probably shouldn't be watching. Also, look away. Um, so our hero's back is just very, very sore. So he's gone to a masseuse to uh, get it stretched out, um, which you can see right here. See, this is the, uh, the stretcher for his uh, back. Uh, that's why this lady has all the belts. It's just she's very dedicated to her job. Um, so we need to do this ten times. Yeah, our back stretched ten times. Um, uh, I've not kept count yet, to be honest. Number of times. Five, okay. Got six. Seven. We used to have to do uh, like a side quest where we found the bordello deeds and like gave them to the uh, because the owner's apparently a little bit of a little bit of a menace to put it lightly, um, but we don't need to do that anymore. There is also memes aside a reason that we pick her instead of anyone else because if you pick anyone else, we use the regular beds, and it has a risk of interacting with the um, little chest of drawers to. Um, which will then count as stealing and then we'll get a fine and stuff. Oh, we accidentally did it one more time. Then if all goes well, we can jump through this window here and open the demon door who wanted us to, quote unquote, be a real stud. Um, I'd just like to point out the scene of we've just we've just done the deed 10 times in a row and then leapt through a window and talked to a talking door, only in Fable. So we're going to head to Darkwood Lake and this will open up the way into Hook Coast. While we do that, I guess if there's any donations from Peko, by all means go for it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. We've got $20 from Strife the Historian. Uh, so he says, I remember buying Fable the first time when I was a wee lad of 14 years of age, opening the box and seeing four CDs and thinking, wow, there must be so much content in there. Well, three hours is better than none. Shout out to the UATM and Mitako for doing such a beautiful job in the morning. Wish I could be there, but I sadly have to work. I'll see you next event. Yes, absolutely. It'll be lovely to see you. Thank you. Indeed. And that was the, that $20 went towards the, the bonus game of Mary Kate and Ashley, License to Drive, um, which now is just a mere. $86 away from being met, and that would be tomorrow morning. Uh, we've also got $20 from CC6, who says, Etem and the Fable crew are always a good time. Much love to the Fable community, Art. Thank you, CC. We try to appreciate it. I believe that is CC from the Speed Docs crew, if I remember rightly. So they're, uh, they're good guys over there. They do great documentary. Um, so over here, we have Shove Hapney, which is uh, a pub game that I know some people back here tend to struggle with occasionally, so I need to try and upstage them a little bit on this. So we need at least 30 points. I kind of threw there. <laughs> it was just a show vote. <laughs> I kind of forgot what number I was on. Definitely wasn't, uh, yeah. See, what's the big deal? <laughs> Not a problem. Granted, I did current, I did sort of eat my words there, but I, it was, it was my, I'm good at the game. I just can't read numbers. It's too early in the morning. If we look down here, we'll get the last assassin to spawn. head back to the guild so as long as we get this dialogue line here we'll get the last treasure clue and that will be complete yep there we go the their shadowy deeds will out. Right, no potions yet 
Alright, so story-wise, our mother's been kidnapped by Jack of Blades again. Uh, there's a weird book we found in an ancient language which only the guild master can decipher. We're not going to decipher it just yet. Instead, we're going to do something that's probably more thrilling to the uh, more seasoned Fable players, which is we're going to get Scorm's Bow in first try. Uh, if I can remember where to teleport to Twin Blades camp. So, um, Avathis back there has done a lot, a lot of work figuring out what makes this quest tick and she probably knows more about this quest than anyone else um, and she's done a lot of good work in figuring out how to make this consistent because I think before back in 2018 I would have been looking at a clock and like trying to see look at the pixels and see when the time has changed so we're not going to do that we've got something a lot more consistent so I guess to explain a little bit um, you can kind of divide the game's hours up into like one minute. It's a little bit over a minute. It's about a minute and four seconds of real time is an hour in game. And whenever you sleep, it sets the time to 9 p.m. Also, I'm just going to open this demon door just in the detour. Um, so yeah, we have the time set to 9 p.m. Then we instantly interact with a mercenary who takes gold every minute. Um, so it's basically our, our, it's acting as our clock to tell us what time it is. So after the third time that he, he takes payment, we'll know that it's just before midnight. And then in doing so, we'll know that we just have to wait a few seconds before we sacrifice. There are a few other criteria that we have been doing in the background to meet. So it is currently day five going into day six, which is the most ideal one because the game actually checks to see if it's a Sunday and if it is, it will give you um, it will give you a better chance of getting the reward um, the amount of health that this guy currently has is a lot which also contributes to a better chance of sacrifice compared to like a villager or something what else is there there is also our alignment which is neutral to good um, being more good doesn't actually increase the chances it's only being evil which reduces the chances if that makes sense like as long as you're at least 100% neutral, anything else doesn't matter. So we also just need to keep an eye on his health and make sure he's not taking a hit. But for now, we're going into the Grey House Cellar. Um, so I guess to add to explain what I'm doing here, none of this is relevant to Scorm's Bow. I'm just kind of like filling in the time because we have three minutes to kill while we wait for this. And rather than sitting there and waiting there for three minutes, we might as well make good use of the time. So we've just covered up the murder of Amanda Gray, who was Lady Gray's sister. Um, after giving her a letter, but in exchange we can now marry Lady Gray. Um, what else did we do? We opened a demon door and we're now heading to Darkwood Weir. There's a troll from earlier in the game. So we're going to quickly head over to Ancient Colour Skate. And then we're going to be extra cheeky, and as long as we have time, which I imagine we will, I don't see why not, we're, we're going pretty fast. We're actually going to do a quest in the minute that it takes for payment to be taken. So there, payment has been taken there. It is a little bit close, and in fact I'm going to make a safety save even though I'm not going to need it. So I'm going to reach this point, I'm going to teleport to Bowstone South. We're going to do what is probably the fastest quest in the game, which is Execution Tree. So there's, a, I guess, a bug with the quest. So normally you have to escort this guy to be executed and um, the guards move slowly and there's a whole bunch of bandits that try and free him and stuff. And then at the end he gets executed by the executioner and then quest complete, everyone's happy. But what we can also do is, rather than doing all of that, we can just kind of kill the prisoner ourselves. And rather than failing the quest, it will just mark it as complete. I have no idea why. It's possible that they're just checking to see if he's dead or not. And then if he is, quest complete. Now we will head back to Ancient Palace Gate.
and we'll head to Darkwood Camp. I imagine payment will be taken in a couple of seconds. Can we up here? If it is, that's fine, because we need to wait four seconds after um, payment is taken. So we will keep an eye out for that. One, two, three, four. And we're going to sacrifice. And as long as it says your desire, your desire we got it. So yeah, a lot, a lot of work has gone into Scorm's Row, so thank you very much for this for all of that. If it wasn't for that, like, we, even uh, within the last few weeks, we found more consistent methods to basically make it 100% guaranteed. I think we did, like, what... 50 tries of it and we got it every time so if anything's consistent it's that it's like if you get anything wrong it's basically your own fault and I, even I can blame myself when I get it wrong like if I had have done it a little bit later it would have been because I was too slow but Scorm's Bow first try there'll be probably a video coming soon on that to plug my own, to plug my own videos for a little bit but for now we're heading to what is probably one of the hardest quests in the game actually um which is Bandit Spike Extraction. And it's uh, really difficult because basically there's a undercover bandit. Oh, sorry, there's, yeah, there's an undercover guy as part of a bandit gang who's disguised as a traitor, and we need to get him out because there's a plot to kill him or something like that. So we need to go past all of these guards. Um, the reason the quest is so difficult is because he's very difficult to make follow. And also, he has only 120 health, so basically he dies in two hits. So if you're not looking where you're going, you can just instantly die, and there's not really much you can do about it. So we're going to clean up here a little bit. Uh, he's here, and then he's going to start semi-following us. He's not exactly following us, but he's following us enough to get to here. So, if I talk to him, we should get the following logo above him. Yep, there we go, perfect. So now we are going to slow time and hope for the best. This is the difficult part. There is a soft lock to this quest where if he doesn't have the following logo above his head, he can still follow you and it will still reach the end of the quest, but the quest won't actually ever complete. So him having the follower logo above his head is vital, but we will see how this goes. It won't be a problem. Oh, there we go. Um, and now we are going to find Thunder's brother, Whisper. Sorry, Whisper's brother, Thunder. Got my got my words mixed up. Um, who is really mad at us for the whole Lady Grey situation. And wants to duel us in order to see who wins her love. Um, spoiler alert, it's going to be us. So we're going to head to Litchfield Graveyard and go down into... The headsman's healed in order to duel off with him. It's going to be a little bit of an embarrassment, and he may die later on, so we're just going to sort of embarrass both of them. That's point number one, and then he's going to push us down this cliff. And then we're just gonna take a short break, do a little bit of fishing. Not like doing a little bit of fishing in between a duel. Yeah, so far this run has gone pretty good. I think the biggest mistake was um, me not sleeping in the bandit camp, which probably led to about a minute of time loss. Um, in addition, there was whatever happened in Arena. But other than that, it's gone pretty smoothly without any real mistakes. So hopefully I've not just jinxed it there. Um, we're going to open the silver chest here and we're going to talk to a demon door, which is going to unlock a sort of mini shortcut and let us back out of this little cliffside bit.
So we'll head back to Bowstone Jail, which is right near Bowstone North. And we'll talk to Lady Grey and marry her. Um, I think this unlocks one of the only fresco, like, because in the Chamber of Fate there's a whole bunch of, like, paintings detailing the hero's story. I think this is the only one that's not obtained through story means, so I guess if you want to count that as part of 100%, here's, here's that box ticked. So that is us being married, which unlocks Bowstone Manor. You also got 15,000 gold, but we don't really care about that. So hiding inside her bed is a silver key, um, which you get evil points for obtaining make of that what you will. And also here is a... Pretty useful legendary weapon which kind of doesn't really get a chance to shine, it's got pretty good base damage and stuff but um, we don't ever use it, we just always use Solus. Um, that's um, the majority of the silver key chests open, there's still a couple left. Um, we're just gonna grab a silver key and open this demon door who wants us to be married to Lady Grey. And then after that we will go off and fight Maze, do a little bit of story and yeah. So far, so good. Quick potion check, 88 potion, fine. So that's a silver key. Here's a demon door. And then we'll head back to the guild. And the reason we've done all of this now rather than um, doing the story first is because the guildmaster wants us to sacrifice all of the current quests we have active, which is obviously not something we want to do. So we're going to head to Hook Coast, and he's going to read from the book, which will open the barrier, and we'll find Maze there holding our sister hostage with Jack of Blades, and we'll find out he's a traitor, and we'll kill him, and yeah. Fun and games. So actually, fun fact about what the Guildmaster is chanting here, as far as I know, it's not in any real language, but the, what he chants actually changes depending on language. So I think some of them he does it in a different, like it's done with a different voice actor and some of them is just completely different, like in it Italian. He just sort of goes on a few times. Cool, so we're going to hit Maze like that and that's actually going to, we hit him in a very specific way, we're just going to skip a few of phases you see teleports and then immediately teleports away. We're going to do that hopefully with greater effect here, which is going to stop him from going up the lighthouse, which is slow. Yeah, that should do. And that's Maze dead. Rip in peace, traitor. Oh, and the next quest is try to stop Jack of Blades. Um, there is a few things we will do here, and the first one is a new trick that's called Jack's Hit. Make sure not to string the two together. Um, so essentially what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and snipe Jack of Blades from the other side of the map in order to um, get the cutscene to trigger straight away. 
If we go here, we zoom in, and we aim sort of here. There we go, perfect. I'm not sure if that was the first arrow or the second. I want to wager it was the second, but I'll, I could also put credit on myself and say it was the first arrow. It was all me. I'm so good. Also, we got the frying pan. That was what all those treasure clues were for. Um, you can actually dig that earlier and you get a fake version of the frying pan. But for the sake of this, we we do have to get the real one out of 100%. We also just uh, fire some arrows there to get checker blades to start his cutscene early. It just saves us having to take these trips through these maps for all these enemies and such. We've also left, um, I guess, to add the little swirly thing around me, it's multi-arrow, and we've left one there because um, when you use multi-arrow, the very last shot does like double or triple the damage of all the other ones, because normally it reduces the amount of damage you do based on the fact that you have multiple arrows shooting at once, but the last one doesn't actually do that, so um, it means that it's a lot more powerful, and we're going to use that to finish off Jack in just a minute. So we have failed at stopping Jack of Blades, so he's here in the guild and he's set on fire and everything's bad and the guildmaster is dying. I'm going to quickly grab the stats that I need so we have everything maxed out, otherwise I will forget. Cool, that's everything maxed out. So the guildmaster is dying, but he's not really because the expanded portion of the game is coming soon because like the Lost Chapters is almost like, it's almost like a director's cut version with additional content. So coming up here, we have to fight off against the minions and then we face off against the first phase of Jack. There is a trick we can do here called Big Shot, named after Big Law, where we can charge the arrow that we are going to use against him in the cutscene. So we'll see if we can pull it off. I pulled it off twice in practice earlier this week, which is the first time I've ever done it, so we'll see how it goes. No, no luck. That's all right. So he's going to fly up. He's going to spawn all these, like, stone things. And he sort of zooms forward a little bit. And he's dead. So we're not actually going to kill our sister here. We're going to throw away the Sword of Aeons. We've gotten it. We've gotten rid of it. We'll get Avos here later on because that's actually a quest. And now we are going to do something that I can't even... It's really difficult to explain, but um, we're going to break the Fireheart or the Prophets of the Fireheart quest. So normally we would have to solve a puzzle of day and night, which is basically like get all of the blocks to match um, to either be all suns or all moons. But we're instead going to use Eta mode to um, skip into that. So what we will do is we will interact with the Demon Door. We're going to use a trophy, and we're going to pause buffer into the loading zone. We're then going to save the game and go save on save 2, because I chose that one. And then we're going to load the save. We're then going to start the um, trophy mini game. We're going to cancel item mode, so we're now in the map when we shouldn't be, and we have free movement. So what we're going to do is walk on these and then that is going to set it so that the a lot of the puzzles are going to instantly solve themselves so you'll you'll have a look here in a second so we'll skip this that's one puzzle completed that's the second puzzle completed 
third one. Fourth one done. And fifth one done. Thank you for the for the singular round of applause. Um, yeah, the um, the way that works is essentially we are kind of like setting the amount of um, suns and moons that are already in place, and then that kind of um, makes the game think that we already have those set for each round. Because I think all it does is check to see how many suns and moons there are, and then if it's the right amount, then it will complete it. Or how many suns and how many, yeah. It's, it's really convoluted. There was an explanation, but I've completely forgotten it, to be honest. So you'll just have to trust my word and say it's fast. It goes, it goes brr. Go grab a silver key here. That is key number 28, I believe. Yeah, 28. It's also quite finicky going up these stairs. You ever seen a, ever seen someone roll up a flight of stairs? And we're going to face off against the first summoner. Uh, these guys are really tanky. And more importantly, they have a charging attack, which they just tried to do here. Which when they do, they're invulnerable to melee attacks, which is quite annoying. So we kind of have to get them on a good cycle. That's one down, just one more over here. So missed the last few. That's that dead. And now we have lost the chi uh, chin beard. We now have a tramp beard. So rip in peace, chin beard. We hardly knew ye. Also going to do another little snipe here to alert the ice troll here. So the Ice Troll is one of the weirdest examples of Hell Thresholds where he has to do this like 13 times in order to be killed so he'll reach this Hell Threshold but like you can see I'm just not actually injuring him at all. And now he's dead. Uh, he is also probably the... The biggest boss of no hit runs, which I did attempt, I think in 2020 or 2021, of trying to beat the game without a hit because his his ice things are so unpredictable and they kind of just appear out of nowhere. Um, and before you ask, no, you can't use physical shield in no hit. It's like pure like no taking hits even with physical shield up. Uh, I'm going to do some shenanigans here with teleporting. Um, the best way I can explain it is we're setting recall points. Uh, to warp through maps because when you teleport and teleport back it will take you to the nearest exit of the map which by it happens to be where we were so like we sort of got to a certain point in the map and it's like oh you're closest to this exit we'll teleport you back there and then we'll just keep doing that a few times to sort of walk through these maps it saves like five seconds of game time but it's cool so i like doing it Then we'll head here and we'll do another teleport. Northern foothills. And we'll teleport back. And then this will also set our recall point to save us a little bit of backtracking. So here's Scythe, he's like a descendant of a former hero sort of thing, but um, he's, he's quite old and decrepit now, but he's also very strong and wise, so I guess he's helping us at the moment. Um, so head to Northern Foothills, and we are going to head to Necropolis, which is the other graveyard, and I guess the other place where a lot of any percent runs go to die, because it's basically pure RNG in terms of what happens here. So we have to dig up uh, three certain graves which have the descriptions we're looking for so it is George W, T Fung and um, I Love It which are all names of developers in the game 
a lot of these are basically just developer names, which is cute. I like it. Uh, what? Thank you. So here's I Love It, which I believe is named after Ian Love It. There is also a grave for Peter Molyneux in um, in Snowspire, if you so desire. I think you dig it up and you get like a lion's head tattoo, which lion head. Uh, people made fable. I think that is the last instance of fishing that we need to do. And luckily it was an easy one. So that was key number 29. Uh, shout out to T. Timmins, who's actually Ted Timmins. He's actually donated to a previous ESA. He's a very good guy all around. Yeah, we have had a few devs sort of be interested in the Fable Speedrun community and um, even the lead designer, who I believe is in the Discord, so uh, best behavior and that sort of thing. So we've got the 25 silver key chest, which has Archon's battle armor, which looks really cool, so I'm just going to put it on because it takes a few seconds. animation skip on him which we can normally they take a lot of a uh, few seconds to die but sometimes they just do that instead we're not 100% sure it's probably some weird like animation quirk but um can't complain so what we're going to do is we're going to head to lost bay we're going to get our 30th silver key and open the 30th silver key chest as well at the same time because in necropolis there is a demon door who in order to open wants us to give him all our silver keys so we had one of two options. We could either wait until we would collect no silver keys up until that point, and then you talk to him. He's like, oh, how did you make it here without any silver keys? I'll let you in, but why do I always have to beat the freaks or something like that? Or alternatively, we can just hand him all the silver keys after we're done. Do so here. And the 30 silver key chest is actually really underwhelming. It's basically just an Avengers reference, so we have the Avenger. And then I guess the Infinity Stones. And that's it. But the weapon itself does about 185 base damage. And to give you some context, there was weapons we got at the start of the game, not including the Super Broken one, which are already doing like 200 damage. So it's just really underwhelming for being the final chest of the game. We're in Bleachbone Island, which is always a map I've really enjoyed. This is also the location with the heaviest fish, just to... Uh, Add a little bit of lore or side fact. So we have the Bereaver, which is that legendary weapon. We're going to head to Archon. Sh no, we're going to head to Snowspire Village for the final pub game. And hopefully, I don't choke too hard on this one. So it's Coin Golf, the final round. The revenge of Coin Golf. The return of the son of Coin Golf, I guess. I'm going to try and play it safe. That's that. And the um, the r amount of strokes you need to get this is like, I think you need to do it in under 10, so it's pretty um, pretty tight. Or 10 or under, I believe. Is the Ooh. Oh, not quite. Shoot that. This way. Nice. You won. Perhaps you'll come back and that is the last of the pub games. And to celebrate, I'm going to knock over everything. <laughs> Hopefully, nobody died in that. Yeah, no, we're all fine. Everything's forgiven. Ignore all the unconscious people and all the smash windows. It'll buff out. So, we are going to do the Souls of Heroes quest, which is going to start with Thunder. So, Thunder is going to be meeting uh i would have said meeting whisper but we chose to save her didn't we so uh or whisper hey, glad 
So unfortunately, Thunder is one of the few enemies without a th health threshold, but he's just barely has too much health to um, not be able to be killed in one hit, which is kind of unfortunate, but um, we're just going to make do with what we have. It's, it's going to be over in seconds, though. Blink and you'll miss it. So. Now look, I won't Punch him. Oh. Alright, quest start. Quest complete. And now what we're going to do is we're going to head to Witchwood Colorscape, which is the location of our final side quest, which is the Ransom Victim. Um, it is a little bit risky just because the... Unlike other quests, uh, or other escort quests, the kid that's being ransomed here doesn't actually follow you if there's any bandits nearby. So we're going to try and play it risky, but also have him not follow any, or not have any bandits following him or be nearby. So we'll see how this goes. But for now, we'll mark the recall point. So you may have noticed before I said that we need to open all the demon doors, but you may have noticed that we've clipped through this one several times and it's still currently shut. And that is because through some luck of the game's coding it's actually going to open as this quest starts so we can actually count it as being open because the game opens it for us so can't complain yeah we're approaching up on the uh the final stretch here so i guess we tackle if there's anything at the end you wanted to read here or any donos now's a good chance to go for it I would, I would love to have things to read, people. Uh, obviously, everything's going towards Save the Children. Uh, it's a wonderful cause. We've talked lots about the things and stuff, so just to let people know everything that's coming up. Um, so uh, the next run we've got is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. After that, we've got Grand Theft Auto V, which you can get in for the, the ending of that. So that has been taken by the, the third way currently, uh, $270. Kill Trevor slightly behind with $260. Um, following up with that, we've got Trackmania later on, uh, and you can choose the the car skin based on the country and the flag as uh, so we've got denmark france norway and sweden sweden currently ahead uh, of france by 25 dollars and then the last run of today the uh, dishonored dlc uh, you can choose which um i think it's which dlc uh, the runners are going to to do either between brigmore witches uh, or knife of donwall and then we've got things coming up in the morning um you know we're only about 80 dollars or so from the bonus game for mary kate and ashley um and then the two-player, two-controller um, mix mashup run uh, for Crash Mind Over Mutant as well in the early hours of tomorrow. So there are lots of things to donate towards. Um, don't forget, you're always like every time you, you donate, you're in for prizes. You can get money, the seven dollars from the merchandise goes towards the charity. Um, subscriptions, Prime, telling people everything at all, all wonderful, all really appreciated. Um, uh, and let's get lots of donations coming into it. Dan, this absolutely fantastic run. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff coming up that I'm looking forward to, which hopefully includes me completing this quest without... Um, yeah, I think we should be fine because he's right at the end of the map there and not any enemies nearby. It's usually the Temple of Avo map, which is a little bit sort of precarious. But I think we should be fine. And we're not actually going to rescue him. We're going to take him to his brother who uh, wants to kill him because he was always like his... his um, father's favorite or something hey, nah. that's that done last optional quest done so it is pretty much actually no there's what there's two side quests we need to hand in because there's like bronze silver and gold quests so all the silver quests are done there's just a couple bronze quests and a little bit of story and then we are done well So we need to wait for um, Briar Rose's illusions to appear and then we can force push to dispel, dispel them all. Then, then she'll do illusions again. So we are taking the evil route on this just because it's a little bit faster. I think the biggest disparity between um, between like the good and evil path for getting all these souls of heroes to open the gate which has Jack of Blades' new form is um is probably Thunder, where you can either kill him as we did there, or you have to go to the arena and basically do like a mini version of the arena, which is like really long. That's Briar Rose dead. 
Oh, actually, I can also show off. So Briar Rose is right, or was right here and dead. But if we go here, there she is. Yeah, we uh, we skipped that cutscene earlier, so she's alive and well-ish. Oh, sorry. Stretching. Early morning runs and that. Definitely looking forward to getting some breakfast in a minute. So heading over here to Litchfield Graveyard, we're going to, again, mark our equal point for later when we fight Nostro. But for now, we are going to head across this bridge, teleport to the guild, and then we get a reward for our virtuosity in throwing away the sword, which is Avo's tier. Um, so we need to go into Maze's quarters and find a book he was researching, try and stop Jack of Blades. And I am curious, so right now we're at about 257 I think, so I am curious whether we'll get the sub 3. Which would be nice, that would be like an ideal goal. So they see and therefore we get this sword. Um, so heading back to Old Graveyard Path and we'll fight Nostro and he, uh, I guess his gimmick is that only once undead are around him a kill can he be harmed. Um, so we'll try and get him in one cycle but it may take two so don't hold it against me too much if that's the case. Ah, oh, just barely. There we go, he is down. That is the final soul required. Before we would have probably killed the Guildmaster many years ago, but those days are long gone, thank god. What I'm going to do, I'm going to head to Archon Shrine. And I'm going to do one final recall, but before I do, I need to eat a Golden Carrot and a Moonfish to set the time to night. Because we want to hand in the Hero Dolls into the to the teacher. But unfortunately, his position is random. So if we set it to nighttime, he'll always be in the tavern. So heading here, head to Bowstone South, and in the Hero Dolls, and hopefully quest complete. And we can do a quick check to make sure that we have everything we need. Be somewhere in here. Ah, there we go. So we get the Jack of Blades Hero Doll, that's that done. Uh, those four quests can't be completed. Experience, we've got all of that maxed out. Weapons are here. Weapons are here, we got the crossbow. Uh, potion check. Trophy. Personality, I'll let you scroll through that later. Soraya. 53 quests, the final one is yet to be done. And cool, let's head off to fight Dragon Jack. So Dragon Jack is either very easy or very difficult depending on um, on what happens but like we're fast so it's fine so time is coming up pretty soon but basically if he starts like flying up into the air and stuff because of his health phases um, he becomes a whole lot more difficult so he can do this sometimes which is fine so he does that but we can just rush through it oh actually is this not fine Really? Interesting. I guess it's that health threshold. Okay, we're not going to hit the sub sub 3 then. That is really weird. Alright, we'll finish him with a multi arrow then. Ouch. Ouch. Luckily the estimate is 310, specifically for this reason. Oh! Okay, so he's dead, but he needs one more hit to... Oh, there he is. I think. No. Okay, he's still going to do his thing for a little bit. Ah, oh, there we go. And he's dead, so time is coming in just a second, so we're going to throw away this mask and... Time. It will 
Three hours fifty one. Three hours and fifty one seconds. I can take that. That's that's more than good enough. So yeah, I won't dilly dally anymore because I know there's a whole bunch of other great runs coming up. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all of you for staying up at this ungodly hour. Um, I think we're all probably going to head off and get some breakfast. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thank you very much for watching. Check out speedrun.com uh, slash Fable. There's a great community. We've got a whole bunch of guides and stuff. Check out the speedrun Discord, all of that jazz. Uh, check out my stuff, of course, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Amazing, thank you so much, Atem. That was an absolutely wonderful run. We've got one last donation to, to round it off saying, uh, $20 from PT says, early morning fable, what a great way to wake up. So many memories of grinding skill points and being a menace. And I just have to donate for Mataka reading donations. Thank you so much for that. Uh, that's going to the two players per controller uh, in Crash Mind Over Mutant. So next up on the schedule, we have got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and that will be by Katarev, and I'll be handing the mic over to Zanaris. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Keep donating, and we will see you soon. Don't go away. Thank you.